Yeah, we got her here, and she didn't even get lost. <laughs> see what I did there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Emily the Raven! <laughs> so Emily, how has Belgium been treating you so far? Belgium has been treating me fantastically. Thank you for asking. Good, good. I started my started, not finished, my chocolate binge last night. <laughs> it's going very well for anyone who's interested. <laughs> Right, now since the Q&A is a bit shorter than it was yesterday, if it's okay with you, I'd like to open up the floor. Yes, questions. enough of you, enough of you. <laughs> yes. Let me hear from these guys. So, let's take questions from the audience immediately. There we go. Hello, my name is Hello. and uh, my question is, how was your time in Amsterdam? Oh, I love Amsterdam. I had, uh, I had a lovely time. I, yeah, I went to a bunch of museums and I walked a lot carrying a two-year-old, because I didn't, the one trip I didn't bring my stroller, which is really stupid. But I had a lovely time. Thank you so much for asking. Are you from there? No, okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm not making the noise. Um, what do you think about when you're alone in your car? Ooh. When I'm alone in my car? Oh. Anything that it requires silence. If I'm alone, it's nice. It's, it's a really good thinking time. Literally anything and everything. A lot of shopping lists. <laughs> Make nothing. <laughs> That's a good question. See? Ah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I have a card for you. Can I give it to you? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's such a cool oh, outfit. Oh, I see what it is. Really cool. I see what it is. Oh, sweet. I can draw. <laughs> oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I got a drawing too. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't. Where's my card from you? No card, no love. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, yes, as you, as you can see, I'm a huge Once Upon a Time fan. Um, I'm supposed to be Zelina, by the way. I was just saying, uh, you look beautiful. That's yeah, really thank cool. You. <laughs> um, my question was, um, what was your favorite Once Upon a Time moment overall? Overall. Hmm. My, my, favorite, my favorite memory of the show in general is my first episode I ever shot. Skindy. Always will be. Yeah, that, that episode was just... Um, I, I, I learned so much about Belle and the character. It was, yeah, it's a beautiful memory. And it went really well. I loved the director and everyone. So, yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, now that there's a wrap on uh, Once Upon a Time, do you still keep in touch with all your castmates? Or? Yeah, well, um, they only rap. When did they rap? Like yesterday, or two days ago, or something. Friday. But um, yeah, I, and there's a lot of people. You know, we all. It's funny. You run into people, or some people who like. You know, I live close to some people, or then you know your next job could be somewhere else. So it's um, it's definitely important to keep in touch with friends. So, so and I made a lot of really good friends, and a lot of us have kids now too, which is nice, and they're friends. So it's cool. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, do you, just like Belle, like to read books? And if so, what is your favorite book of all time? My favorite book of all time? Hmm. <coughs> one of my, there's a lot, but one of my favorite books of all time is a children's book called The Velvet. Well, it is a children's book, but it's, I don't know, I like it as an adult still. So it's called The Velveteen Rabbit. And I just reread it and I remembered how much I like it. But I also am obsessed with Harry Potter books. So. That's like a gazillion books, so. You guys like that too? Really? Huh. I had no idea. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I wanted to ask over the years at the conventions, you get asked the same questions over and over again. Is there a specific one where you actually completely change your answer? Oh, 
not on purpose. I mean, this, this, like, like a book, like a question about a favorite book. That's something that does change. Or there's many favorite books, or many favorite films, or many favorite moments. It's always hard to say this is the only favorite food or moment or whatever. So yeah. Hi. Hi. Do you do the rumble pose? Oh. And I do the rumple pose, not as good as him. <laughs> um, Colin does it well. Which side is it? Is it this side? Is it like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> does, he, does he always do it on the one side? He must, probably, right? I wonder. What does he switch? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, so I wanted to ask you how many different characters like Tess and um, Claire, Belle, how do you get in touch with them when they're so different? What inspires you? Number one, uh, good writing. You know, if you have uh, something that's well written, that's the number one inspiration. And also, you know, it, it's what teaches you about the person. And then. Um, your director, that's their job. So if they do it well, they're there to help you and guide you through and, you know, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a team effort. And there's a lot of people that can help bring a character to life and all of the other things too that really help, you know, it's wardrobe and makeup and props and so many little pieces. So it really does take a lot of people to bring this one character or any character to life. And I always try and bring life experiences of my own, if it makes sense, if there's something I can relate to. Yeah. Thank you. My dream is to be an actress, and how did you start acting, and on which age? Hmm, I, I started when I was 17 years old, and I just remember saying that I, because I was dancing, I was doing ballet full time and I thought, well, that's what I'm going to do until I do something, you know, until I retire. But I changed my mind and wanted to try acting. And I just, um, I don't really know what I did. I, I just uh, got people's phone. I just started reading about where, who should I contact? Who should I call? Like I took a class for a week. I don't like acting classes personally, but a lot of people love them, so I would give that a shot. I did one for a week just to see if I was any good and to get some tape to give people and just kind of be very proactive and ask people a lot of questions. They might be annoyed, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> and good luck. You're welcome. Hi, Emily. I love you. Yeah, and uh, my sister couldn't be here. But uh, she's a uh, very uh, much Roswell and Lost fan like me. Oh, cool. And um, she wanted to know if you remembered something good about Roswell and if she, you remembered when uh, Tess said, uh, uh, I need a chair to sit on when she lived that Kyle and Valentine's out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was like a Thanksgiving episode or something. My God, I haven't thought about that in a long time. That's funny. Roswell memories. I mean, I don't. It's, it's so long ago now. I have good memories. She was a fun, fun character to play. <laughs> I was thinking about that. that I, have, I have, I have memories of wearing way too much makeup on that show. <laughs> I put so much makeup on us. <laughs> but um, say hi to your sister. Um, hi. Uh, what is your favorite thing about Belle? Her honesty. She always, yeah, always tells the truth and always speaks her mind. Thank you. Hi, my name is Isabel. Hi, Isabel. And uh, I, um, I'm really nervous. Sorry. Uh, what was the difference between shooting the bird scene and Lost, as in the bird scene and Once Upon a Time? Mm, there's no rock. <laughs> there's no giant rock. Thank God. I remember, I remember when we were doing Lost, and like, it's going to be on a rock. Like, <laughs> no, really, it's going to be on a giant rock. <laughs> um, yeah. The, lo the Lost one was much 
more real and like they, they wanted to make it a lot more real. Totally different show, obviously. So, you know, the Once Upon a Time was a bit more, I think they filmed it, they ended up um, screening it as a montage, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, the whole, no, but like they didn't film it as a scene, it was a montage, so yeah. The last one was better. Hi. Hello. If you, if you could travel, uh, no, time travel anywhere or when, where would you, where would you Everywhere. Go? I want to go everywhere. Don't know. Uh, I, I, was asked, I was asked this last weekend and I, I, I said, uh, I think he said like the 18, 1800s England, because I find that time period there really interesting. But there are so many places I'd love to go. That's one for sure. Hello. Hello. Uh, during the first uh, two seasons of Lost, you had uh, probably the biggest fan base in the world. But uh, coming to the last season, some of those fans were just a little bit disappointed with the plot. How do you f reflect on that? Were you proud with the ending? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little indifferent with my opinion, personally, of the ending. I think it's really hard for a show to go on for, I mean, I know some shows go on for longer than six years, but a show that is, like, lost, it's a long time to go on and you're not ever going to please everyone. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I think there were a lot of amazing things about that show, though, and it was a really difficult thing to try and wrap up. You didn't really want to give everyone <coughs> here is all the answers, because then it always defeats the purpose of the entire show, which really kept everyone thinking all the time, and the theories surrounding it, which is, you know, again, part of what was so cool. Thank you. Hi, um, where were you and how did you react when you got apart from what's one sign? Well, I didn't, it was, it was a little bit different with this job because uh, I, they just asked me to do it because I had worked with the, with the creators of this show on Lost. And so they just um, called me up and asked me if I wanted to do uh, one episode. And I said, yeah, you know, because I love Adam and Eddie are awesome, and the show sounded cool, and I love Robert Carlyle's work, so we worked well together, so went back for one more, went <laughs> back for one more, and then second season came on all the time, so, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, I have a question. Uh, hey, hate Harry Potter, any... too. Yeah. Just like me. Okay. Hate it. Uh, do you have any future <laughs> projects? I, am, I literally just shot the finale of Once Upon a Time last week. So I will have future projects, but in the future. <laughs> but I'll let you know as soon as I know when and where you can see them. And hopefully they're, hopefully they're cool. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Fonzi. Um, I'm Star Wars and Star Trek fan. Sure. So um, I was wondering, um, you were directed by J.J. Abrams, uh, I believe, for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do you still keep in touch with him? I have not seen him for a while, no, but he's a lovely man. Yeah. And just a little bit talented. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, him and Damon may have lost what it is, so. Um, I was wondering too, um, would you be interested in playing in Star Trek or uh, Star Wars? Yeah, sure, I'll, go, I'll do the next Star Wars movie, yeah. <laughs> Can you call them for me? <laughs> yeah, I think you have better connection. <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Emily. Hello. Hi there. Um, I'm just going to read this from my phone because I get nervous. Um, basically, my question is, how do you make believable for yourself or enough to play it? Something that you know instinctively is wrong for your character, it's the wrong choice, and something that goes completely against everything they would ever say or do, but the writing is making them do it. So how do you make it believable yeah, enough yeah. for yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I mean, 
it's, it's, it's not the wrong choice for that character. You know, it might be the wrong choice for me, personally. It's something I wouldn't do, but, you know, it's not me. So, it's just, as good writing. So if it's bad writing, it's usually not believable, even for the audience. So just, a, I think, a combination of it being written well and, you know, being de hopefully a decent actor enough that you're, you know, playing in 100% committed to what that character wants to do and should do or feels like it. By the way, I really want to steal your dress. So, you can keep it, it's fine, but it's very pretty. I'll tell you where I got it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Are you and Robert Carlo good friends? We are good friends, and he is a lovely man. And he has really funny dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I now am telling my daughter, it's funny. <laughs> Hi, Emily. I Hi. brought you something. Can I give it to you? What is it? <laughs> it's a big glass. It's what? What? Go on. It's a big glass. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's, it's not as good as birds and chocolate, but it's really good. No, it's really good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's a Dutch and Belgian kind of like cookie. It's what really good. For coffee. No, not like a strip waffle. Is it like a strip waffle? No. No, no it's different. It's better. It's ginger glass. Ooh, oh, yeah, these are good. I had these ones before. Thank you very much. So much. <laughs> Yum, okay, bye. <laughs> um, hello. Hello. I know that a lot of actors say they don't, but one, do you like watching yourself in the things you play in the series or movies? And do you rewatch like Once Upon a Time sometimes in your free time? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Not many actors are like, oh, I love watching myself. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't love watching myself, but I don't dislike it. I mean, I like to watch everything I do to see how it turns out because a scene can be edited so differently, they can cut bits out, they can, I mean, the scene might not even be in the episode if the episode was too long, and maybe, you know, like, so I like to see what you guys are seeing in the end, and it's also really different if there's special effects. You know, if we're shooting a lot of the fairy tale stuff, say for once upon a time, and it's all literally, you know, green screen, it's, you know, cool to see it done, and also making sure that it worked out well, and that, you know, you did what you think you were doing, hopefully. And, um, also, early on in a series, sometimes, depending on the character, or if it's a really difficult role for a film, it's maybe nice to see something early on to make sure what you're doing is working. Um, but yeah, and I don't watch it in my spare time, no, but I do make sure I, I watch what I do. Thank you. <laughs> I, guess it's, I guess it's technically spare time, though, if you're watching television, isn't it? Because it's not a job. Watching TV is not a job, so... Um, <laughs> Hi. Um, I was wondering where you got your love of animals from. I grew up with animals, probably. I don't know. I think it's just something you either have or you don't. I've always enjoyed being nurturing, like I always wanted to have children, I always have had animals around, so I think that kind of ties in. No, I've never lived without animals, so I don't know anything different, I guess, to, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm wondering if you like to work in the British film industry? Or do you prefer America's industry for the cinema? Uh, God, I've really only worked in the American film industry. I've worked in a lot of different countries. But the jobs I've done have all been uh, at least a co-American production. Maybe they've been a co-production with somewhere else um, on the production side. But I, I would love to. I'd love to work more in Europe, and I'd love to. I'd love to actually work more back in Australia because I only ever did my first job there, and that was even that was a American co-production. So, yeah. Thank you. 
Hello. Hello. This sort of ties into a few things being said yesterday. What's the favorite or the best or the most interesting thing you've eaten on a travel uh, on a journey or when you were traveling? Belgian chocolates. <laughs> He's right here. Um, most interesting thing? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't try and eat like weird things. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to try and eat know, something the <laughs> yucky. <laughs> most interesting. Mm. Most interesting thing recently I had was, I don't even know what it was, but it was this really. It was like a celerac dish with all these mushrooms and stuff. I don't know. I tried snails. Yuck. I'm not a huge fan. I also don't, I don't eat meat now, so I've always gone back and forth through my life and I'm trying to be a very responsible eater right now for many reasons. So, yeah, a bit more boring. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, my question is, uh, what's on your uh, top three list of Netflix? <laughs> top three list of Netflix. Um, my top, okay, well, what about my top three favorite Netflix things are, well, the Stranger Things. Yes. There's like, there's some random guy from that show here too. Um, <laughs> Just a lot of hair. Yeah, he's alright. Um, <laughs> uh, Glow. I love Glow. And I'm trying, I'm racking my, my brain trying to think of this really cool documentary series that's about, it's about a cult that moved to America from India. Look it up, it's super cool and really crazy. If you look, yeah, look it up. It's a Netflix original. And it's, a, it's about a cult, and I can't think of the name of it. If I think of it, I'll let you know. I'll type it in or something. Hello. Hello. Um, if you weren't cast as, as Belle or Once Upon a Time, which character do you want to play? Cruella. But, I mean, I know, I mean, I would, I, would, I think that Robert's character, that Rumpelstiltskin is by hands down the coolest character on the show, but I could never, ever, ever do that. He's too good. <laughs> Hello again. Hello again. Would you like to do a cosplay? As what? Maybe Belle, maybe someone else. Okay, I, should, I should have just showed up today as Belle. <laughs> Damn it. I guess like, I'm going to keep the dress. So. Uh, yeah, I could. I never really have. I mean, I dress up for, for Halloween. Only sometimes, though. In Australia, no one really dresses up for Halloween. Do they here? Is Halloween a big no. dress up? It's a, just American thing, right? Or well, North America, because Canada does it too. But Germany, a little bit, yeah. It's coming up. It's coming up. Here. Is it? <laughs> it's it's. <laughs> We're working. It. We're it. Hi. Hi. I was I was wondering what's your f your f favorite song at the moment? My favorite song at the moment? Oh, good question. My favorite song at the moment literally is Good Night by the Beatles because it helps my two-year-old go to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, I love this song! It's amazing! I mean, I do love the Beatles though anyway, but... <laughs> Hi there. Um, <laughs> Hello. How do you act against special effects on green screen? <coughs> sometimes it's sometimes it's easy, depending on what you're doing. Sometimes it can be really hard if you're having to do a lot of things that are not there. So I don't like it that much. It looks fabulous in the end, so it's cool, but. I don't enjoy, I enjoy having, you know, a real set and real props and being in a real environment. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering whether playing all these different characters, does it bring you, this, do you feel like it brings you closer to your true self or like you just keep discovering things about yourself and sometimes don't know like who am I exactly? That's a really good question. 
Um, it's kind of a bit of both. I think it, it, 100% you can find out little things about yourself that you maybe didn't know, or also, uh, you know, learning something from, you know, say your character likes to ride horses, or your character likes to knit, or something that you, I can't be trying to think, something that you don't do much of, and like, oh, I really enjoy doing that, and then it becomes a hobby of your own, that's pretty fun, and it's also pretty cool if you get to, um, if you get to learn how to do something for a job, um, like martial arts training, or something that you wouldn't usually do, it's fun, but um, if you're, and the other part of your question of if you're playing, sometimes if you find played a, a character that's either going through something very, very difficult, or she's just a messed up character, or whatever it is, it takes a minute, you know, after work or after the week to kind of shake it off, and you know, it can affect the way you feel. Of course, if you're doing 16 hours a day of someone who is, you know, psychotic or going through, you know, a negative part of her life or work or something. You know, it's, it's, that can be hard on your own life. So, on the other hand, if it's a character that's just happy and bubbly, that's much easier, you know, to feel good about your own life. Hello, you. Yeah. Sorry, what? Huh? <laughs> I can't see where you are with the microphone. Oh. You need like a little, um, you need a little horn, <laughs> like a beep, <laughs> beep. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So you have a storybook Hyperion Heights. If you could cast a curse or a spell, where would you send everybody? <laughs> to, to the Lost Island. Oh. <laughs> and see, see how they all did there. <laughs> they die. <laughs> I'm afraid it's time to whisk you away. To whisk me away? Yeah. Do you have any final words, any parting words to your Belgian fans? Well, hopefully not my final words, but <laughs> parting words from this. Thanks for, like, awesome question to you guys. Thank you, thank you. And, um, just I love you and I love your country and thank you for coming and hopefully I'll get to see more of you out there. I'm going to go sign more pictures and take some pictures and... Yeah, come come see me and say hi. And um, yeah, I love you and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. And if you go outside, it's a beautiful day too. I mean, stay here. <laughs> come see me and then go outside. <laughs> All right, well, I love you guys. Thank you. Everybody, <laughs> the